feel like I'm doing like a Top Chef challenge with you here. <laughs> <gasps> Done! Hands up. <laughs> Hey, Justin, I'm so glad to be here with you, man. Thanks for being here, man. It's always good to see you. Let's just talk a little bit about what we're making today. Today we're gonna make skiaki. Um, it's, a, it's a very, very classic Japanese kind of one pot dish. It was really the introduction um, to Japanese food. I used to have my friends growing up, and I'd always want to invite my friends to my grandma's house and, and have her make them skiaki. So we're gonna get the, the sauce base okay. um, started first. We're gonna use some nice dry sake, some mirin, uh, Japanese rice cooking wine, a little soy sauce, uh, and brown sugar. Okay, awesome, so super simple sauce. Super simple to start, and then all the rest of the sauce is kind of built from the flavors that we're gonna add. I'd love to know more about your background. I really got into food by spending time in the kitchen with my grandmothers. Um, I've got a grandma from Japan, I've got a grandpa from Norway, and then I've got another grandma um, with roots out of Mississippi, so I had a very, very diverse uh, food culture growing up. Is there a reason why you use brown sugar over white sugar? I mean, I generally prefer brown sugar. I kind of like that molasses-y flavor. It's just more full. You get more than just yeah. sweet, you know? It's much more of a well-rounded flavor. Awesome. And you are brown and sugar. And I'm brown sugar. Yeah, so you are. You. Yeah, you are. I'll stop this. Yeah. You're light brown sugar. Yeah, I'm more. Yeah, I'm more the light, you know? So. <laughs> and then is there a certain, like, reduction you, you go down to? I mean, all we want to do right now is just get that sugar dissolved, bring it up to a boil. This is the base. Later, we're going to be adding a dashi to it that's going to dilute it down a little bit because this is probably going to be very uh, potent right now. So, Chef, we got the sauce going. Yep. Uh, what are the next few steps that we got? Um, right now, we're just going to kind of start doing some knife work and getting all of our veg prepped up. Could we go through some of these ingredients here? It looks beautiful, by the way. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's uh, pretty classic ingredients. We have thinly sliced ribeye, shingoku, or a chrysanthemum green, shiitake mushroom that will rehydrate, shirataki noodles, or it's a yam noodle, napa cabbage, minoki mushroom, firm tofu, scallion. I, I love using this kind of cabbage. I think just because on the bottom, that texture, it's a little heartier. With this dish, what does it represent in Japanese culture? So it really uh, represents family time and just kind of togetherness. There's actually a special stove that it's made to be cooked on that's usually built into the coffee table in the living room. You know, the whole family sits on the floor around the table. Everybody kind of adds the ingredients together and it's really just a dish made for, you know, spending time together. There are Hmong dishes that are exactly like this. A few things are a little different, but same concept. Right, and I think most cultures that have especially strong family backgrounds all have their version of this kind of one pot, you know, hearty, you know, family meal. Next we have our enoki mushrooms here. Uh, one of the reasons I love to use enoki is it's really for the texture. I mean, they just have, they have an amazing ability to absorb whatever flavor that they're in, and they just give a really awesome, nice, chewy texture to any dish. What do you love about cooking? You know, it's really, I mean, for me, it's an art form. You know, it's really the way that, you know, I get to express my, you know, my art, my love, and it's really just a great way to communicate with people and bring people together. I find myself tending to use a lot of unique food combinations. I think I have a lot of different points to reflect back on from my childhood, just to, you know, having these meals where we'd have collard greens and sushi and, you know, and lefts all at the same dinner. Um, but, you know, my, my passion foods are really Southern and Japanese, so I try and fuse those when I can or keep them pure and separate at the same time. Looks like we're getting hot in there. And we're gonna throw the whites of the scallions and kind of toast those up. There we go. And you're just trying to really just draw that flavor. Exactly, yep. just releasing a lot of those uh, aromatics out of the onions. You can already kind of yep. smell it there. So we're gonna add in our soy sauce mirin yep. uh, brown sugar mixture here. Remember we talked about soaking those shiitake mushrooms. Um, I recommend no matter what, anytime you're using dry shiitake mushrooms yeah. and you soak them, save this liquid. Yeah, because that's all the flavor, the all umami the flavor. that, yep. All awesome. the umami. We're gonna throw that in. Like you said, it's gonna add some umami mm -hmm. um, and help uh, thin out some of the potency from that mirin and soy. Once this starts to come to a boil, we're gonna start slowly adding all of our ingredients. Now one thing um, very traditional with kiyaki is everything kind of stays separated in the pot. So you know, you'll do a thing of cabbage, you'll have your noodles, you'll have your greens, yeah. and you kind of build everything around. Yep. So then when the family's eating, everybody can kind of just kind of take which pieces there, that they yeah. want. Yep. And one of the things I've started noticing yeah. with all the ingredients in this is it's a very light dish. Yes. It's hearty and light yeah. at the same time. Yeah. It's a great cold weather dish. But yeah, it's not, you know, you don't need a nap immediately yeah. after. I mean, where you could take it. You could take it. I mean, I'm, don't, wrong. Yeah, I'm always down for a nap, don't get me wrong, but. And then finally, we will add our yam noodles. 
So then at this point, mm -hmm. I'm gonna turn it back up to a boil. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna put the lid on it mm -hmm. and kind of let all of that break down and marry together. See you in about seven minutes. Okay, chef, so we're ready to go? Yeah, it looks pretty ready to me. Actually, I decided to invite the person who kind of inspired this dish for me. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Grandma. Hi. How are you? Bye. Thanks for coming over. This is Chef Yia. Nice to meet Bye. you, Grandma. So what do you think about it? Is this the way you would have done it? Yeah. Does that look all right? Mm -hmm. Should we find out if I pass the test and uh, yes. give it a try? Let's eat today. All right. Let's eat. For me, this is kind of a choose your own adventure. You yeah. know, some people like more tofu, more beef, so. Yeah. So, I mean, we just kind of take bit of what you like. Grandpa used to call these angle worms. Angle, angle worms, yeah. yeah. Oh, you did. What's that? You did. Oh, I was supposed to cut them? See? <laughs> See, we don't know all grandma's tricks. Here, we're going for you. Oh, yeah. Taste it and let me know how we did. I think I did all right. What do you think they're chef? This is so, so good. It's so comforting. Yes, yeah. yes. Awesome. Glad you like it, Chef. Thank you. How about you? Surprise. Surprise. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> <laughs> Tastes so good. Oh, well, thank mm. you. Is he your favorite? Why am I? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Fish will not. Fish on camera. <laughs> <laughs>